continuing this daily upload, daily vlog. I, I missed yesterday. I really, I did literally did nothing yesterday, so I didn't want to do that. But I'm back in the garage, so thank you for joining me. Even though we're back in the garage, I promise you, I'm gonna have something to do today. I have Carter coming by. Carter's bringing a subframe. We're gonna be cleaning that, working it out, getting ready for the swap. We could talk to Carter about what's going on with his swap, and a little bit more hanging out. So we're gonna have something else to do other than hanging out. Uh, I have some new bolts that came in. I'm gonna throw them in. That was some stuff I talked in the last video just to clean the engine bay up and just wait until Carter shows up. Here's a before. I'm changing the bolt. I got some new bolts for the uh, proportioning valve, the ugly, rusted, ignore the brake lines, I know, but I'm focused on bolts right now. So here's a before. Here's our after. I just got some black phosphate bolts. Uh, I wanted something black just to see if it can blend in there. When I tightened it with the socket, it, it kind of took a little bit of the black off. I thought the black was going to be a little more stronger. But, I mean, for what it is, let me focus out of here. It just kind of disappears. If I don't like it, I'll get some uh, zinc-coated bolts. But that's just one of those little things just to reduce the rust. In. Whoa! Reduce the rust in here. In the last video you guys saw, I made those fuel rail spacers. And I was telling you guys, they didn't really, like, the band, the, not the band saw, the chop saw kind of put a lot of burr on them and i went to go put them on now after they you know the paint cured and everything and they don't fit <laughs> like they're they're a little too short so they're just taking up that emptiness but they're not really stopping the rail and i think that's because again the chop saw put so much of a burr on them as i was filing them down it was taking material off and i just measured them now and they're smaller they shrunk a little bit than what i needed them to be so that was a waste and I went out and I bought a new tool yesterday. I bought a bandsaw. I bought one because when I originally made mine and I was doing a live with it, I caught a lot, caught some attention, not a lot of attention. It caught like three or four people's attention. They asked me to make some. I said I wasn't going to do it because the way mine came out with all that burr, like it was okay for me on my personal car, but I wouldn't want to sell that to somebody. So it got me thinking, I got the wheels turning, nobody else is making this. I bought a bandsaw. With the bandsaw, I'm hoping to actually make a couple for some friends of mine. You know, again, there's only like three people. I'm not going to do this mass production, but I'm just going to make some sets for some people and help them out because I'm sure they're using like washers or bolts to take this gap up. Turns out now that my spacers are crap anyway. So the ones that I made for myself, I'm going to make myself another set. And as long as my set comes out good, I feel confident enough to, to make some for some other people. So. I'm going to start working on the bandsaw right now, and hopefully the ones I make work a lot better. Because I don't know what happened. They just don't fit good anymore. All I got was this 9-inch Harbor Freight bandsaw. I cut a piece yesterday. It works great, so I'm just going to do it again. So I was in the middle of cutting my uh, my fuel rails, and Carter finally showed up. So Carter's got his subframe here. And, uh, Are you going to say finally? Uh, not finally, but everybody's been asking about you, Carter. Like, what's up with the swap? Corona messed everything up. I right, y'all, y'all stay safe out here. It's getting real. <laughs> yeah, I see. You're all ready for the well, Rona. I'm nervous. I was. I barely didn't want to come over here. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> well, you got your subframe here. What kind of subframe is this? This is an EG subframe. Okay. Out of a, uh, I think a 95 something. Now I know you've told me like 30 times, but you're using this because it helps the motor sit it lower. Pushes the motor back off oh, of the radiator. It, pushes it back. So yeah, you can run bigger manifolds and things like that. Okay. All right, so we're just going to be power washing this. That's what Carter brought it over for. Power washing it. Did you bring something to paint it? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. All right, so he's going to soak that up. I'm going to uh, run all the hoses and everything to get the power washer going. And let's see how clean we can get this. I didn't even get a before shot, bro. Oh, damn. My, my damn, bad. man. Well, you can see it was. you bought this used, so it's like all oily and everything like that. It's all right. We're going to make it look mint. Well, it might even be pretty good after we power wash it. You know how I was saying that I needed the other bracket? Yeah. Sway bar bracket. I was looking at a LA Time, you know, free exposure, by the way. LA <laughs> Time, and they said that you can't run that bracket because it's in front of the mount of the swap mounts. So, oh, I thought you were talking for the back. Where's that? It goes underneath here, but apparently there's something, something interferes with the mount or something. I don't know. On the transmission side, I think. For the sway bar. Yeah, so they don't run that sway bar mount. I guess that's why it was off because this was on a K swap already. I don't know. I've never done this on a on a uh, on an EK, so I'm not I'll sure. I'll buy it anyway. It's only like six dollars. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that cheap? Yeah, just get it, just in case. But I, I have to. Once we do it, I'd have to see. I'll look into it though. So Carter's over here washing his subframe. He already took out a, a tuck, 
took a lot of the uh, the oil and stuff off, and there's a lot more rust on it than we thought. So he's got some paint for this anyway. We're gonna probably paint it with uh, with this stuff right here. This VHD roll bar and chassis paint, I've used that, so this is good stuff. And he's doing his subframe. You know, I did that whole clip and I wasn't even recording. Uh, I'd do it again. <laughs> you done with that? All right, I'm gonna use that. So, well, since he's done with that, I'm gonna come up here and uh, I'm gonna just cut up some more of this, uh, the fuel rail spacers, like I said. My I got a couple new ones made. Uh, I measured them. They're closer to the dimensions I needed than the other set I had. But I'm letting them cool off because they're really hot right now. Then I'm going to double check to make sure they fit. But the problem that I'm running into right now is this is Harbor Freight. You know, well, you can't expect much. But first of all, this miter gauge right here. And a side to side play. And I have no stop on this side. I keep trying to make a stop so I can just push the stock onto it. And then I, I don't have to measure anymore. Just kind of push it, cut, push it, cut. But I have to keep trying to keep trying to keep i have to keep measuring every piece so it's really slowing me down it's actually aggravating me the blade's getting hot i don't have any cutting oil right now so it's becoming a little bit of a pain i might make another two and stop until i can figure out how i can make something right here for a stop but i don't know that's that carter's carter's on the other side of the house right now he's getting ready to paint his subframe we'll go check that out okay so carter's going for his third coat right now let's see what it's looking like well it's a lot better than what it was hell yeah well, this is the back of it. The front is what we're going to see. So, all right, it looks, it's going to look mint. Why don't you turn it around so you can focus on the front better? Just a, just a suggestion, since that's what they're going to see. All right, so you're going to lay... Well, you're going to keep going until that's empty, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll come back and check on you. Update. I've been wrestling with this bandsaw for like an hour and a half, almost two hours, because it won't even cut straight now. I don't know what happened. I've never owned a bandsaw, so if you guys know how to operate these things, give me an idea, because I'm getting ready to bring this thing back anyway, because I've already noticed there's like bent bolts in here and stuff like that, and I've cut so many pieces, and they keep coming out crooked or inconsistent, but the inconsistency is because I don't have like a, uh, a proper stop. I'm going to show you how inconsistent this thing is, or how bent. I've been cutting just little test pieces and you can just see how crooked they're coming out and this is just getting ridiculous so i don't know let's go see how carter's doing oh wait there he is carter yeah i'm just telling him i'm getting annoyed how are you coming out you know what i mean i ain't no professional let's see I think <laughs> oh you turned it over it's gonna be better than what it was. That's all you can ask for, right? Yeah. right so let's see that harness. I know you bought the engine harness. He picked it up. You picked this up with a whole bunch of other stuff, right? I ended up picking that up with um. I forgot what I got with it, honestly. I don't remember. Well, yeah, I know we were. This was questionable because of all like these wires. I don't even know what these are. Um. So what we're going to be doing, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this engine harness. I'm going to put it on his engine. I'm going to lay it out. And then we're going to pretty much route it the way we want. So it's going to kind of be like the way I did my engine harness. But first, I need to lay it on his engine, connect all the sensors. And once we connect it, that's when I start cutting um, these looms out. I cut all the loom open. And then that's when I start depinning stuff. So I'll depin like what I did on mine is they have this, the main ground right here. So what I did was I pulled this off, I pulled all the loom off, and I pulled these wires all the way back to the ECU plugs over there. And so this main ground that I have, I actually have this tucked inside the car. I don't just wrap it and like leave it. I, I actually pull this and I'll pull it all the way back. So that's the way I do engine harnesses. I've had people ask me if I can do their engine harness for them and I just say no. Pretty much because I don't just have like a generic way of doing it. I need to do it in the car with the engine in there so I can route it the way it should be. I don't just kind of like throw loom over it and everything like that. that. To me, that's not the way you should be doing it. So I'll show you how mine is. So I did this one years, like man, five or six years ago. So I would do it differently now. But as you can see, I don't have that bulk uh, ground right here. And I have everything running 
in the back it's loomed up there it's not the prettiest like i did this years ago so carters will definitely come out a lot better i've learned a lot uh, new ways but it's like the injector plugs i uh i run them the way i want and then i just repin them so i, I ran them coming out from the bottom instead of coming from the top and I, I just just how i'm gonna do it so i'll have a video we're going to lay his engine harness plug it in like if how it would be and once we plug all the sensors in that's when we cut all the loom open and repeat what i just said before so i've been looking a little more into carter's harness and um we're figuring out like it you know it's a used harness so they did cut it up it looks like they've had this with b series uh, a tps and um a b series map sensor looks like with some of the plugs i found so i'm just going to show you guys some of the things to look for and if you're confused and we might need another harness so just check this out all right so right now carter's got the fuel injectors right here so they were just butt connected i mean this is garbage work so if we end up keeping this harness i'll fix that so here's the butt connectors that i ended up finding i pulled a whole bunch of tape off so this one right here so we're not looking so this looks like a b-series connector to me correct me if i'm wrong both of these do we're not looking at this color wire we're going back to before the butt connectors so this is the the yellow green the green yellow and the red black so this is the tps harness or the tps connector so this would be the tps and then this is the map sensor with the yellow red instead of the yellow the red black so these are the two that they added we're gonna have to change these connectors or cut them off and add the correct ones then the reverse lockout yeah it's this guy right here reverse lockout i don't know what they did but they burnt that up um, that's a three pin, right? Yeah, so that's your speed sensor. Uh, everything else is there other than the charge harness is what I'm noticing, which, which would hook up. Where's the charge harness hookups? Uh, should be a big, right here, these guys. So this would hook up to a second harness, which is your charge harness, which he doesn't have. So Carter, you tell me, we keeping this or do you want to see if somebody has a used harness for you? I mean, I prefer to always go with something that has less work, but I mean, we gotta work with what we gotta work with. I'm broke, but uh, I'm gonna be on the internet looking. All right, so if you have a used K-Series, a K20 harness, let me know in the comments or reach out to me on my Instagram and I'll refer you to Carter. What's up? What's that? This is just a loom that they put. This is like, I think they, all right, so here, let's show this. So I think they put this, if like, um. If you're dynoing the car you hook up the the clamp the amp clamp right here i think I'm, i think i'm wrong though but i think this is for an amp clamp i'm not really sure because this is usually like a, oh yeah it is it's around the top of the valve cover so you can access it easier instead of instead going to having to open this up there. and hook in here so I, I think that's what that's for but if you have the a used k20 harness that isn't cut up like this hit me up on instagram i'll, I'll, I'll send you to carter you guys can work something out if you have a used charge harness, all we need is the, the motor part. We don't need the, the battery cables, the alternator cables, all that we're gonna make on our own. I have a ground kit at the house too. You have a ground kit? Yeah. Well, that's, that's just ground. That's just ground. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We, that, that, we, need, we need to make the power cables for the alternator and the starter. So yeah, just throwing that out there and that's some good info in case you guys are curious. And uh, I think that's that's going to be pretty much the end of this video. We uh, we're home, we're home to social distance. yeah, we're gonna social distance. I broke my bandsaw. I didn't break it. I was using it. The thing just broke on me. So that's going back to Harbor Freight. It's probably why we we're having all these issues. So I really I, I got I got fed up with that. And just as I was getting fed up, it it broke. So I was kind of happy. Carter subframe. He's letting it dry. That he's gonna leave this that here overnight. Let it cure because it's gonna rain tomorrow. So we got to put it inside that's it right that's it yeah that's pretty much it there was nothing else to do we were just looking this over so before we even put this on we'll uh, we'll see if we can find you another harness and um we want that 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 covid19 discount that's it ali i'll uh i don't know how long this video is i don't know how entertaining this video was but carter came by Good morning. I, I know man i've just been in the garage doing nothing i really got to put the parts i have on but i've been trying to figure out this fuel spacer situation and is that my mom? right now i can't figure it out yeah that's my mom i'll catch you guys in the next video stay motivated keep making the streets louder